All right. Oh, he's there. Look at him. <laughs> oh, the great Larry Bower. Oh, my man. What do you say, Bo? Happy What's baseball, up, man? baby. E e everything's going good. How are you doing? Good. You look great, man, as always, pal. God I bless feel good. You. feel good. I heard you took a spill, huh? Dude, I, I, I swear to God. How so my kids playing <laughs> eleven U travel ball, right? So have you been to the Ripken facility? Yeah. All right. Yes. Which is like heaven. Like I think about when we were kids and we played on like these pebble field <laughs> the rocks. There was a broken glass, whatever. These right. these are replica big league stadiums. It's gorgeous. It's unbelievable. I used to wear mouth guards when I took ground balls. <laughs> <laughs> You need to wear a hockey mask between right. all the, the the pebbles flying up in your face. But yep. so I'm walking and uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm talking because I can't shut up and I don't see a curb and there was a curb and I didn't see it. And my ankle just rolled and I wow. fell down I fell, and I was so embarrassed. Meanwhile, my I could feel my foot like just it's the size of a freaking hand. Of an Easter hand. I'm like, you gotta be kidding. What an idiot. Uh, and you know, it's a big thing about is with the parents too. Like, I don't wanna be like the, I don't wanna embarrass my Massimo. Right. I know it, it, it is embarrassing when something like that happens, but uh, hey, you're all right. As long, as long as you wake up in the morning, both feet hit the ground, you're good. Oh, yeah. No, listen, it was more about me being embarrassed about being a loser than anything else. Uh, right. It is the 10 o'clock hour brought to you by the Bet Park Sportsbook app, the great Larry Boa. So, Bo, what do you think of, first of all, let's just go 50,000 feet the opening weekend. Well, I, I was a little disappointed in uh, the bullpen the first couple games, and you know, because I thought we threw the ball pretty well. Uh, Atlanta's a good team, but... Uh, I don't know. I, I thought we played a real good game yesterday. The bullpen really responded. Uh, we played yesterday without heart. It was a it was a designated day off. So just to ease people's minds, uh, even though the fall he took into the dugout or the the, with the, the camera well over there, he's fine. Uh, he'll be playing tonight, barring uh, good weather. But uh, you know, for for the most part, I'm happy where we are. We would like to have won two out of three against that team, but. Uh, it's going to be a dogfight between us and Atlanta, as you well know. And, uh, you know, they've been winning the division, but they come up short in October and they got to come here. And I'm not putting my, the, the cart before the horse or anything, but uh, I'd be very disappointed if we don't go deep, deep, deep into the playoffs this year. And uh, obviously we're going to have to get through Atlanta once again. Yeah. I, I mean, let's go just let's look at the, the team makeup for a second. And, it, look, you know how we overreact. That's part of our charm is that right. we're going to overreact. And people are going about the bullpen. That bullpen's got a ton of arms out there, like big arms out there. And it's the same thing. Like, like you, you know it better than anybody. You can't judge well, a pen for – you've got to give it months to, to kind of fall into place. Yeah, there's no question about that. Um, and, and we're going to get a kid like Kirkering back real soon. I think he's got one more rehab. And he's going to add a lot to the bullpen. You know what you would love to have seen, especially opening day, and I understand where we're coming from. If you could have got Wheeler one more start, I mean, one more inning, I mean, he's dominant. Every time he takes a mound now, it's unbelievable how he dominates I big know. league hitters. The contact they make off him are so weak. But, you know, you got to be cautious. The first start, he didn't really – he missed a couple starts in spring training. His, his wife, they had a baby – and then he had a, a, the flu-like symptoms one time. So uh, Thompson's being cautious with him. You know, he's a, he's a stud, Anth, as you well know. Uh, we get him and Noel out there. And, and you saw what uh, Ranger did yesterday. He gave up a home run the first inning. He settled in. Uh, we got three real good starters. And Sanchez, I'm looking forward to his outing tonight. He pitched very good in spring training. I like our team. The addition of Merrifield is going to add a lot to the – the durability and, and flexibility of our ball club. The, this guy can play everywhere. He's a big time hitter as far as putting the professional hitter. He doesn't try to hit home runs. He puts the ball in play. And I really think Marsh and, and Bohm and, and, and Stott, they're going to do nothing but get better. So I, I really like where we are right now. I like the makeup of our team. I like our coaching staff. 
Uh, I see good things ahead here. And as you well know, hey, that window's not open for a long time. A lot of these guys are in their 30s now. We got to take advantage of this. We can't be just getting, uh, be happy getting in the wild card and, and maybe advancing one or two rounds. We got we got to get to the where the where the ring is, and hopefully this year is the year we can do that. Yeah, I'm completely with you. And to your point, when you t- we're talking about opening day in Wheeler, I think it's more of a state of this is just what baseball is. He's at 89 pitches. You know, it's rare that you're going to go into 100 pitches. Uh, in 2024 to open the season. I mean, but mate, you're so right. He's added that pitch. He looks, he's t- so tough. What a great, man, what a great ace that Wheeler has become, man. I just feel, you just feel so confident when he's on the mound. Uh, you know what, Anth? I really think, and I, I, I'm not saying anything about the American League, but in the National League, I think he's the best pitcher in the National League right now as yeah. we speak. Every time he goes out there, you know, at spring training, I, I brought up something to him. I said, you know, I watched every one of your starts last year, and I didn't see you get rocked once. And he goes, well, you must not have seen that Williamsport game because I forgot all about that. I think he gave up five <laughs> runs in the yes. first inning. And then it, when he said that to me, I said, oh, I forgot about that. When he says, yeah, he says, I haven't forgotten it. So, But that's the only time I've seen him where he's just been out of sorts. Other than that, man, he takes you to the sixth, seventh, eighth inning every time out. And it's an it's not a – a hundred percent on every pitch it's effortless the ball comes out of his hands he's got that long stride it looks like the ball hops on the hitters real quick he's got great movement he's got great command i mean to have this guy go every fifth day you're not going to get into a lot of losing streaks when you have him and nolan i know nolan didn't have a great start his first time but you have those two guys going back yeah, once back. he settles in i mean you know I yeah mean, he's going to give you what nolan gives you and, and which is yeah. very good you know, when you, uh, well, when you, that's what it is. Yeah. You know what? And if you check it out, and I know, you know, go check it out. He doesn't miss stars. He gives you innings. He mm-hmm. has, a, he's up there in the leaders and strikeouts. I mean, we signed these two guys and they were big time signings for us as a team. You got to thank John Middleton for that. You know, he's the guy writing out the checks and he knows, uh, I wish you could have heard John's speech at the beginning of spring training. I was ready to put on a uniform and go play. But he wants that trophy back, and, and he said it in uncertain words. I want that trophy in my office at the end of this year. And everybody got he got everybody's attention in that locker room that day. So it, it's very important, not only for the city of Philly and the players, it's really important for John Middleton to get this trophy back. Yeah, I I, I love his his like desire, like his his will to win, and he, and you know he'll, he'll do whatever he needs to do. Like, the, it, it's funny because we've become that, we had that top owner. And it's, it's such a valuable tool in baseball. And it's always been when you have that owner that's hungry and that will go all in all the time, that's just such a huge advantage. Well, you know, the other thing that I, I think is going to happen for sure, no matter where we are in the standings, when you come, come that trade deadline, yeah, I look for John to be very active. Well, I don't care if we're in first place, second, wherever we are. If we could be leading the division by five or six games, and, and he's going to, if he can add on and make this team better, he definitely will do that. And and I think when when an owner says that, it, it not only it jacks up the community, but the players in the locker room they say, "Man, this guy really wants it," and they they give you everything they have every night. But when they see an owner like that, they go they go up and beyond the the, the call of duty. Believe me, they're ready to go. And I really think last year, Anthony. Losing to Arizona left a bad taste in a lot of guys' mouths. You know, a lot of times that's overrated, but I listening to them in spring training and being in the, the locker room, they have a bitter taste in their mouth and they have some unfinished business to do. So I'm really looking forward to this season. And again, I'll bring up 08 and 80. The two years we won the World Series, they were leap years. And I'm just saying, Ant, this was a leap year. <laughs> so third time's a charm. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let's let's remind people that you are the great Bo Adamas. <laughs> Larry sees the future. I, I'm telling you, over the last two playoff seasons, Bo has predicted the one year, because then I had a bit of a hiatus last year, the two years ago, you predicted like, I don't know, it was like 12 straight games, how it went. It was uncanny. I never saw anything like it. It was unbelievable. I got to blame last year on you because I didn't go on with you. You want to? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
right. I was in jail. I have made a prediction because I would, I would, regardless of who I went on with, I'd have made a prediction. Once it was three to two, and we coming home from Arizona, I said, hey, this, we're, "We're going to the World Series again." And then the roof caved in. We just quit hitting, swinging a lot of bad pitches. And give Arizona credit; they're very athletic. But man for man, position for position, we were much better than them. And you know, as you well know, that's why you play the games. They uh, they did what they had to do, and then they went on to go to the World Series. And of course, Texas beat them last year in the World Series. Hey, real, real quick, just a baseball uh, point off of that. So, w- obviously, you know we're a fastball hitting team. We sit dead red, like we have big days. I mean, the first two games of that series, the crooked numbers were everywhere, and they come in and they just pitch it backwards and they pitch it junk. And they and they force you to test your patience. And was it just like I, I look at those two games and I go, that's what that's what it was. I mean, and, and it's like baseball simplicity. There's no question. They, they they completely turned the script on us. They 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 quit trying to throw fastballs early in the count. And as you said, they pitched backwards. They started us off with breaking balls. When they got ahead in the count, usually hitters look for breaking balls. That's when they threw fastballs in off the yeah. plate. We swung it. It wasn't the fact that we didn't hit. We swung at pitches that weren't even in the zone. That's what was very disturbing. And and we're a much better hitting ball club than we showed. The first two games here, we sort of went out of our element again. We swung at a lot of bad pitches. Um, you know, sometimes being too aggressive hurts you. But I think they're gonna they're gonna calm that down a little bit. They know in their mind what pitchers are trying to do to them. Uh, you know, the team we just played is very good. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They're yeah. a very good baseball team. But I like our lineup top to bottom as as much as anybody. I watched the Dodgers last night. Outstanding team. They spent all kinds of money. But you need to take their seven, eight, nine hitters, and I'll take our seven, eight, nine hitters. If our guys, the big boys, as we call them, if they do what they're supposed to do, I don't see any reason why we can't get to where we want to go at the end of the year. I mean, you, if you got – Castellanos and Marsh, seven, eight. Seven. I mean, unbelievable. You know I mean? That's deep. Uh, yeah, I mean that's, <laughs> inc- that's incredible. Hey, you brought him up earlier, I, and I really want to dive into him because I I, I think he's going to have a monster year. And he settled down after the Albies home run. He struck out seven on that incredible lineup. Is Ranger Ra- Ranger? I think he this is his year. He blossoms. Ranger had the best spring I have seen him have since I've been affiliated with him. You know, I've been with the Phillies a long time, but I've seen him in spring trainings. He is always a slow starter. He comes in. I'm not saying out of shape, but he's not in the kind of condition you'd like to see him. But he was unbelievable. He didn't give up a run in spring training. And after the home run yesterday, man, he settled in. He knows how to pitch. He yeah. doesn't overpower with 97 or 98. He goes in, out, up, down. He's got command of all of his pitches. The one thing about this guy, he gets upset when you take him out of games. He doesn't. He's not into the 85 pitches. I mean, I watched yesterday in the dugout. He shook his head like, come on, I, I, I can give you two more innings. He wants the ball. So if you throw him into the mix and think what he can do, potentially, you're talking about three guys at the top of rotation. And let's face it, when you get in the playoffs, you use three pitchers. And you got Wheeler, Nola, and, and Ranger. I'll put them up against. I don't care who the Dodgers signed. I don't care who the Yankees signed. I'll put those three guys up with anybody. And with our offense, uh, when we're hitting on all cylinders, like I said, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. No. But, uh, this is going to be a tough team to beat once we get going here. Uh, I really believe that. I looked at the schedule. This is the first year in the, since the last two years where early in the year we've had rough schedules. When I say rough schedules, teams that they are playoff bound. Yeah. But I looked at our first month. I know there's no easy game. I respect everybody puts on a sure. uniform. We've got a pretty formidable schedule to, to take take a, a good leap in this first month. We should be getting out of the gate really quick because I just looked at it again before I came on the air. We're not playing a lot of great teams. We're, you know, Again, I respect every team, but we're much better than all these teams we're going to play in April and May. Oh, I, I, you're so right. I mean, Cincinnati's pretty good. I, I like. I, I think they have a chance they, to they, win the Central. They're a young team, but they're pitching. Yeah. Pitching to me is a little shaky, but yes. they got some good. Athletes. So you know what's interesting? As I was laughing because 
on the Braves broadcast, Bo, the uh, the the Braves guy goes, because you know we, you know how we are, right? There was booze over the weekend and the whole thing, right? So he goes, yes, uh, even on Easter Sunday, they would boo Christ here after the resurrection. <laughs> you know, you know, it's it, it, it's really weak the way these announcers. <laughs> think our, our fans are crazy and a, out of control and they're avid baseball fans. They don't have yeah. that in Atlanta. They don't yeah. have that. I mean, when I went to the playoff games in Atlanta, they think they're making noise. They're not making any noise. Come on now. It's just like a regular game. It's different here. And I, I've told a lot of people, I don't believe in home field advantage in baseball, but I do here because the bank is different and teams do not want to come in here and play. Believe me, they, they get we intimidated the by playoffs, right? I mean, like you know, forget about the last two against Arizona. I mean, we've you right. know, the last two years, the play, Atlanta comes in and they just will. Oh, they, there's team. I, I've heard comments from other people that that's a tough place to play. You never hear that in baseball. You might hear it in football and maybe basketball at times, but in baseball, I've never heard that. But it's out there and it's real. And I don't think teams that come in here to play are looking forward to it. It's not as bad during the course of the season, but once that red October comes, I don't think these guys want any part of this city. Believe me. No, no. How, it was so good to see Charlie uh, on Friday. Uh, we love him. You're you're his best buddy, um, you know, throughout this whole journey. It's been, it's, it's thank God that, that he's yep. brings such life to everything. The two of you, you know, and I know how much he just, he loves you. You know, it's, it's really we, awesome. We have a good time in spring training. We hang out, we walk around the batting cages, talk to the young players. And that really, the, the team was really motivated when they saw him come out. I know we didn't play good that game, but when they saw Charlie throw the first pitch, you know, let's face it, when you have a stroke, <clears throat> it takes a while for it to regain everything, <clears throat> your limbs and everything. He's a little bit shaky on his right side still. In fact, we went underneath and I said, we're going to throw five or six under here. He says, I got you. And I said, you're going to be fine. He was, he was really a little nervous. He was apprehensive. He says, and I said, everything's going to be good, man. Believe me. They're not even going to watch you throw. They're going to be glad you're out on the mound getting ready to throw this first pitch. But he got a great response from the, from the crowd, which I had, that didn't shock me at all. I knew that was going to happen. But he's a gamer. And uh, this guy's a tough dude, man, Anthony, as you well know. He's gone through a lot of. A lot of things with his health the last five or six years. Yeah. And he keeps bouncing back. He keeps bouncing back, believe me. Yeah, God bless him. And I, you know, I loved it. I love the camaraderie. Like, I, and I think this most Philadelphians will agree with me. Like, the two of you guys, like, we love when we see our, you know, Phillies or whatever team it is, the past guys just, you know, together and, and, and deep friendships and, you know, that, that's the thing about the Phillies that I, I think really resonates and why it's special because of the relationship that you guys are really real good friends. Like, it's not yeah. just like, hey, we both wore the uniform. You guys are tight, and I, I love that about it. Yeah, you know, and, and this organization does a special job. There's no question about that. And you got you to gotta take your hat off to John Middleton, who does a tremendous job. He loves the alumni. Uh, I've never seen an owner – give out rings to guys that are on that wall that never won a ring. And he had special ceremonies behind closed doors about guys that wow. on the wall of fame that got world series rings. They were shocked. And he brought them up in this room. He had champagne glasses and he toasted the alumni. And he says, every one of you guys are welcome. No matter what we are, where we are, first place, last place in the middle of the pack, you're welcome here. Anytime you want to come bring your families, and when you have an owner like that that acknowledges what the alumni have done for the for the city of Philadelphia and for the Philadelphia Phillies, man, that's something special. And I, and I know every every organization doesn't have that kind of uh, response from their from their owners. No, I. You know what's funny it reminds me, the Middleton rain reminds me of Ed Snyder, and when how yeah. Ed Snyder treated the flight, you were around it, and you remember. Yes how much he yep. loved his players, how much he loved the fans. He loved the, the, the franchise. Like he was in love with his franchise. And I think that's kind of how John is. No question. 
Uh, and, and, you know, the feel, the players feel that. I mean, opening day after after Charlie threw out the uh, the first pitch, he's standing in front of the dugout. He's wishing everybody good luck. I mean, you don't see owners do that uh, for opening no. day. You might see Clubhouse doing it. He was right there shaking everybody's hand, the managers, the coaches, the players, saying, let's go. This is the year for us. I mean, that stuff is – uh, cool. And it comes from art, believe me. It, this isn't an act. He loves the Phillies. He loves to compete. He always talks about when he was in college, he was a wrestler. The, the story he gave in spring training, he says, you know, I go into to Wawa or something to get coffee, and people say, hey, have you gotten over the Arizona thing? He goes, are you serious? He says, first of all, I have not gotten over the Arizona thing. And he says, I still remember when I got beaten wrestling for the championship, and I haven't gotten <laughs> that either. So that tells you how competitive John is. and But to, to, that permeates through your whole clubhouse when you feel an owner – have that much compassion and want to win that that trophy back, that means so much to players. And, and people don't understand, oh, well, he's the owner. But this guy's a different owner, and he loves the game of baseball, and he loves the city of Philadelphia. Hey, uh, last thing, Bo Adamas, uh, because we love you. But the last thing <laughs> is uh, Final Four. Who, who you, is anybody beating UConn? I mean, my uh, God, well, they look outrageous. That 30 to 0 run the other day. There they're a juggernaut, man. I mean, I mean, they're unbelievable. Right. And to win back, I think, look, I don't think anybody's going to beat them, really. I mean, if somebody beats them, they're going to have to take the air out of the ball. And I don't know if you can do that. They, they got everything. And that coach does a great job. They play with a lot of intensity. Uh, it's going to be a fun, fun Final Four. I would like to see the big dude from uh, Purdue and the big boy from uh, from UConn go at it. That, that could be a pretty good yeah. matchup. But I, I, yeah. I don't see any beating UConn. I, I really don't. And I'm looking forward to this, the, the women's tonight with yeah. uh, LSU and, and Iowa. That girl for Iowa is lights <laughs> out. Man. Yeah, and Caitlin she, Clark is ridiculous. Ice water veins, man. She fires from, from NBA threes. She doesn't yes. care. So that's going to be a good game to watch, too. All right, last thing. Would you Embiid, would, do you want Embiid to come back or do you kind of settle no, it for I'm, next year? <laughs> no, I want him to come back. I mean, Max, he's done, yes. unbelievable. he's done an unbelievable job. And it, it, he's tried to carry the load, and it's tough. But you put him beat in there. Uh, I'm not saying they're going to go deep, but we, we need him back in there. And we can do some damage with him in there. Even though he's going to be – he's not going to be at 100% in shape to go up and down the court. But this guy's a force. And it was a shame that he had to miss most of this season. But uh, I want him to come back. Uh, obviously, if it's going to hurt him, no, oh, but right. if, he, if he feels good, let him come back and, and, and try to put some uh, icing on the cake here and finish strong. You know, it's funny. Maxi reminds me of you in that people love Maxi. There's certain guys that we just love in this town, and it started with you, and it's like, and Maxi's <laughs> one of those guys. So, uh, you know, I, I think of you. It's it's funny that parallels. There were players you that know, come the, through the town. You know, I try to tell these young kids, if you go out and play hard for this city, I'm not going to tell you they're never going to boo you because if you have a bad streak, <laughs> they might boo you. But when you play hard day in and day out, you're going to win these fans over, regardless of the outcome. They want to see effort. It's a blue-collar city. Go out there and bust your butt. Fess up when you mess up. I think that's important. Don't try to make excuses. They'll read right through you. You try to make excuses, they can read right through you. This is a city that... They really love their athletes, and they see when you're not giving 100. percent They're going to let you know, and yeah. that's what Maxi does. And he lets he lays it out there every single game. It doesn't matter if they're up 20 or down 20. He plays the same. Hates the truth, Bo. You're the greatest man. We love you, buddy. Looking forward All to right, a fun yeah. season, man. And I'm glad you're back. And I know you're doing really well. And hopefully, come middle of the summer and end of October. We can make some predictions, and I'm, I guarantee one thing. If I make one on them this year, late in the season, it's going to come true. I know it. I believe it, man. <laughs> I believe you, Bo. I'll be bothering right. you, man. You're the greatest, buddy. Yeah.